What's going on folks, welcome back to the party. I wanted to take a break from the norm today and talk about an upcoming MMORPG that I've been loosely following for a little while now. Corepunk is a top-down MMORPG being developed by a company known as Artificial Core. It's being made on the Unity engine and features a seamless open world with Fog of War and so many supporting elements that it would take me at least 15 videos to explain it all. Over the weekend, as I was doing more research and brainstorming for the future, I remembered that I hadn't checked on this game in quite a while. For this video, I'm going to try to quickly explain what this game is, who it might cater to, and what you might expect from its near future. It's currently scheduled to have its first closed beta in December of this year, meaning about a month or so away. However, there have already been delays before for this title, and as we all know, nothing is certain, so that time frame is subject to change. I want to start off by giving a shout out to some very helpful community members that have made massive compilations of information for everybody to use. Make sure to say hello if you see them around. The world of Corp Punk takes place in a land known as Koala. This is a wide open world featuring four different cultures, or major factions if you will, and these cultures provide different themes that add dynamic experiences to this MMORPG. You'll see Monopunk, or a more fantasy based theme, Cyberpunk of course, Steampunk, and Dieselpunk for the last one. Their names are the Elanians, Quadari, Baden, and Yorners. Or Punk plays very similarly to popular MOBAs such as League of Legends, Dota, and personally it reminds me of Heroes of the Storm with some of its classes. Control-wise, we'll be using left and right mouse click to move and interact. Jumping will be a thing, but Q, W, E, and R will be utilized for our skills. You are able to swim in this game. Both mounts and various artifact items will be available. There will be 20 different universal skills that take up our D and F keys, and they do have plans for gamepad support. Although it plays like a traditional MOBA, there are multiple differences that we'll be talking about over the course of the next planned videos. The biggest being that Core Punk is going to be a full-fledged MMORPG. Throughout their interviews and news announcements, they put a big emphasis on wanting to create a more classic MMORPG experience while innovating with something new. Max level in this game is currently 40, and after you reach this point you will be able to join the cultures I mentioned, and getting to max will take you anywhere from about 80 to 100 hours, but the progression does not stop there. The game features 12 heroes, 6 of which they plan to have for the upcoming closed beta, along with it being capped at level 20 during the test. And each character has 3 weapon specializations, or subclasses I should say. These classes are not gender locked, but they are race locked though. And you'll see fantasy based ones like orcs, dwarves, humans of course, and more. You can't hide in a bush like you would be able to in a normal MOBA, but height advantage and visibility is a thing. Targeted and untargeted skills of course, PvE and PvP content which we will be talking about soon, guilds, professions, housing and farming being planned after launch, RTX and 4K support being planned, and almost up to 20,000 people per server. Localization wise they have plans to support at least 5 to 10 languages, voice acting also being included in that, which they do already have English voice acting and we'll talk about the interaction and questing system in a bit, but they have plans for servers in the United States, Brazil, Europe, and Russia during the closed beta, with them aiming for servers in places like Korea and others like Oceanus at a later time around launch. Currently they're focused primarily on the PC release of this game and console is something they'll focus on after, but they don't have any plans for Steam at this time, which I think they totally should because it would be a great place to advertise their game. For the game's combat supporting systems, the game features four different archetypes, tank, DPS, healer, and support. Hybrid character builds will also be a thing. Each subclass has over 10 different passive talent trees that we can pick from, but we can only choose a total of three. But just like the subclasses, we won't be necessarily locked into our choices forever, but I'll talk about that another time. Prow control is also available in this game. You'll see effects like stuns, sleeps, fears, charms, taunts, disarms, silence, blindness, and immobilization. Crowd control does work the same way in player vs player as it does in player vs environment, but there are diminishing returns when it comes to the player. There isn't any scaling in PvP, progression wise gear score is a thing in this game, along with item randomization when it comes to the drops, artifacts like I mentioned earlier are basically bonus items that you can equip on your character for extra stats or active skill effects, these are featured on the 1-6 through six hotkeys and function just like items from League of Legends. Items do have various qualities in this game, uncommon greens, rare blues, and legendaries for example. There is an auction house in this game, and it is a unified global auction house, the same thing for bank storage except there will be no account storage available. There will be an enhancement system, but there won't be any chance of failure, and there won't be any randomization when you're enhancing, meaning that you always know what bonus you're going to get. 
Moving on to the content systems of the game, like I said before I'll be going more in depth on this stuff in the future, but party size is capped to 4 players, there are raid groups that you can create, along with an entire system for guilds like I mentioned earlier, game content will not be gated by gear score, and professions, we have 4 crafting based ones, blacksmith, artifactsmith, alchemist, and mystic, 5 gathering professions, skinner, collector, miner, lumberjack, and herbalist, two secondary professions, fishing and cooking, and lastly two social professions, sheriff and hitman, although these two might not be available until later, but just by the names I'm sure you can guess what those can entail. Each profession will have its own leaderboard and there is a character talent tree that supports gathering known as the looter tree. There are no low level resources meaning that all resources will be needed at all levels, however there will be a cap on professions you can have per character, but we don't know yet what that is. Moving on to player vs environment content, there is a lot that Core Punk wants to offer. Their goal is to have you experience about 40% of the content while leveling, and then get exposed to the other 60% after you reach end game at level 40. Player vs environment content should include dungeons, both for solo play and up to 4 players with varying difficulties, randomly generated dungeons, raids, mini bosses, world bosses, wandering bosses, plans for a PvE survival gauntlet like a tower, and an enemy camp system with advanced open world AI, since this does have elements of MOBAs after all. Dynamic weather system, meaning we'll see things like rain, snow, wind, fog of course, and sandstorms and deserts. Nighttime will also play a part in this, there is a day and night cycle, and at night, the mobs have an increased spawn rate. There is no party finder and no teleport to dungeons, but there is public transport, and any party that has more than 4 members like I said, will be considered a raid group, and there will be random encounters we'll find out in the world. Interesting NPCs, hidden quest lines, rare elite mobs or bosses, NPC vendors, and much more. We don't know the exact map size, but they do say that the world will be large enough to get lost in, and that there won't be any loading screens except for traveling between worlds and dungeons. For PvP content, there will be a karma system, meaning yes, open world PvP will be a thing, but there will not be full loot. And there will be a criminal system to deter people from griefing, and that's something we'll talk about in the future as well. They won't have any mechanics that'll encourage or benefit zerging. They'd rather have the PvP be a tactical experience, and they plan to incorporate mechanics for this instead. PvP content-wise, aside from the open world, we'll have dueling, 1v1, 2v2s, and 3v3 arenas, instance 12v12 battlegrounds, and you will be able to level through PvP exclusively if you want to. They've also even mentioned that they have plans of PvP based dungeon scenarios, basically like Hellgates from Albion Online. And I did mention how there's no PvP scaling, but there's also a couple other cool details like, if you're on high ground, players that are on low ground can't see you, but you can see them. There will be an honor point system and you can use it to gear yourself through PvP, and both unranked and ranked PvP modes will be supported. The game itself also does feature an interactive system through questing, meaning that you can go down different paths to complete your mission, or open those up into completely new ones. There will be a main story questline with multiple planned endings, and also plenty of side missions. Cash shop wise, they're aiming for buy to play plus cosmetics with the battle pass, but they've strictly said that they will not sell anything that affects your gameplay, so hopefully that remains true. And that's pretty much the main gist of the game, but I know I'll get this question right off the bat, and that is how does Core Punk differ from what's already in, or what's coming to the market? I've already mentioned a couple similarities to games like Albion Online, and we also have Lost Ark. In comparison, I'm still trying to find out the main differences, but so far I think the main ones would be that the combat appears to be slower paced, and the RPG elements. Core Punk seems to have more of those than its current relatives, meaning that the quest lines and the story itself seems to be more open-ended and fleshed out to where you can go down many different pathways. We're going to have to see for sure during the closed beta, but along with the western version of Lost Ark, I'm extremely curious in trying this one out. So far no one's been charged for getting into the upcoming beta or future ones, so you shouldn't lose anything from signing up on their website, I'll leave a link in the description below. But let me know what you think of this game and if you'd be interested in learning more. I'll call it there for now, but I hope you have a wonderful night or day, and farewell.